This is quick fire syncope questions on fludrocortisone. So Mel, what is fludrocortisone? Fludrocortisone is a mineralocorticoid, so it's a volume expander. It helps you absorb the salt and the fluid that you're consuming to help with your blood pressure. And why might you prescribe this for your patients? This is prescribed if we want to augment somebody's blood volume and if we want to augment their blood pressure. So typically, patients with low blood pressure phenotype who have orthostatic intolerance or vasovagal syncope. And are there any precautions one should take if you're prescribing fludrocortisone for your patients? Yes, so the main side effect of fludrocortisone is hypokalemia, so we do normally recommend monitoring of potassium. It can also cause supine hypertension, so we do recommend monitoring of blood pressure for the side effect of supine hypertension. Other side effects include ankle or peripheral edema. It's not always very well tolerated for patients for these reasons. And what would you say to a patient who um, wants to top up their potassium in terms of a dietary recommendation? So exactly, we normally recommend that patients top up their potassium with bananas, oranges or any other fruit, vegetables or nuts that contain potassium. Okay, uh, would you be happy for a GP to initiate fludrocortisone in the community if you've seen the patient in the clinic? Certainly, it's something that we prescribe routinely and regularly for our patients with syncope and we're happy for GPs to prescribe. As long as we explain to the patient the need for blood pressure monitoring, which they can do often at home, mm. and for a remote monitoring of potassium levels and provided it's tolerated, then it's safe to continue. Okay, so practically, when do you do the first potassium measurement after starting through the cortisone? We would normally suggest that about two weeks after starting. Okay, and if it's normal, do we have to monitor again? I would normally say yes, Okay. every six months. Every six months, okay, good. And uh, how long do you think your patient should be on fludrocortisone for? Is there a time limit? We normally like to limit it because obviously mineralocorticoid has glucocorticoid activity. So there are the longer term risks, not to mention the supine hypertension, but also osteoporosis. So we like to limit it to around a year. Obviously, this is time for the vascular reconditioning to occur from the patient's exercise and uh, conservative measures. So after a year, we want to wean it slowly to stop. And how would you wean it now? We'd normally wean it by halving the dose and then halving again over two to four uh, week periods. Okay, good. Um, just the one thing I want to add is that the mineralocorticoid uh, effect is much stronger than the glucocorticoid effect in fludrocortisone. So we're fairly comfortable with the 12 month, even 18 month if needed, because the side effects of the steroid effect of fludrocortisone are not uh, as as severe or significant as being, for example, on prednisolone, yes. which is a pure glucocorticoid. Yes, but we do normally warn patients who've got significant mental health problems um, of that mild glucocorticoid activity or if they're issues with weight gain, as this can also happen. Okay, so um, any other aspects of fludrocortisone that you think we should hear about or cover? No, we say it's generally slightly less well tolerated than midodrine, but it's a very good alternative. Okay, final question. When would you choose to start fludrocortisone uh, ahead of midodrine? If the patient has severe Raynaud's with evidence of digital ischemia um, or digital ulcers, or it's, it, there's a concern that they're going to get worse on midodrine, they would normally go for fludrocortisone. Uh, secondly, if the patient has significant side effects with midodrine and they feel they can't tolerate it, then fludrocortisone can be more effective. Sometimes because it's only once a day rather than three times a day, this, this may be more practical for some patients. But I'm getting a feeling from you, Mel, that fludrocortisone is really a second line drug uh, instead of midodrine, compared to midodrine. Yes, it's less well tolerated, it tends to be less effective, it takes longer to get into the system and it has more side effects. So, so it is a second line drug, but still an acceptable alternative. Thank you, Mel.